choke, no joke. Yeah. It's choke, no joke. Let's go. Choke, no joke. Chicken choke, no joke. Choke, no joke. Niggas choke, no joke. I, I know this industry chick with to blog. Yeah. When I got exclusives, I hit to all. Let's go. Then she did some shit to piss me off. Okay. It was crap shit. Chuck, Chuck. Hey. How's it going, everyone? How y'all doing today, y'all? My name is Shannon Waldron. I'm uh, the founder of Urban Fates. We're a lifestyle brand out of Chicago. This is our second year hosting the panel discussion and artist showcase. Uh, just to give you some, some background on, uh, just to focus on what we're doing today is just, we came here a few years ago. We saw that, uh, we saw tons of artists perform, but we didn't feel as if we were uh, retaining any, like, gainful information, yo. So, uh, we decided to do our own. We wanted to bring out some of the best tastemakers that we have out here and uh, just offer you guys something more than just a show. So uh, this is a great opportunity to just to learn from some of the industry's best. Uh, network, mingle, and enjoy yourself, man. I'm, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, uh, but be prepared for something nice, man. This will be a good show for you guys. Stick around for the showcase, and I, uh, I'm glad you guys came out. So. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? How y'all doing? All right. Thank you for having me. My name is Damon Williams. I'm the Senior Vice President of Programming for Music Choice. I'm going to take this one. South by Southwest 2016. How y'all feeling? All right, all right. My name is Jay Batchelor. I'm the News and Music Editor for Hip Hop Weekly Magazine. Uh, I was here last year. had a great, great experience, so I'm really glad to be back. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Good? OK, so my name's Brittany Lewis. I'm the senior music editor at GlobalGrinds.com, which was founded by Russell Simmons. Hey, everyone. It's your favorite, your girl, D Woods. And I am a dancer, singer, actress, and founder of my own label, Woodgrain Entertainment. What up? I'm off Austin. Better known as Choke No Joke. Producer, director, legendary videographer. Uh, I do a lot. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and get everything up, but uh, that's it, Choke No Joke. We gotta get hype, people. I know it's early. <laughs> I'm Mike P, lead producer of Revolt TV. I represent um, not only Revolt, Cones Enterprise, Bad Boy. Um, we out here. Come on, we gotta get hyped. This is a cool. This is a, let's go. This is a legendary panel here. A lot of dope people right here. A lot of jewels. So let's let's turn up. I don't even know how I followed that up. Oh my god. I'm just getting started. So I want to <laughs> hear that. It um, it's your girl. It's eleven eight. I am the editor at Baller Alert. Balleralert.com. Hey, hey. And I will be your moderator today. First of all, I want to thank all of you guys for getting up early in the morning to come out here. It was hard for me, so I know. <laughs> that it was so because I was turning up, I'm not gonna lie to you. So, <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and get started because we got an hour to cover a lot. Um, I like to get started with everybody, you know, starting from the bottom is, is basically one of the things I think a lot of people don't really realize that how much work goes into what we have to do and how we had to get here. So, if everybody could kind of just share just, you know, a short little personal experience about how you got started and we could start with Damon. Cool, yo, for me, it all started being a DJ. I went to Norfolk State University in Virginia. Uh, local program director was like, yo, if you show up at 5.30 in the morning, I'll give you an internship. He ain't tell me the radio station was like 40 miles in the country in Moyot, <laughs> North Carolina, in the woods, but I got up, started there, became a mix show DJ, became one of the uh, top DJs down in Norfolk. Eventually uh, moved into Washington, D.C., became the program director at WKYS, WPGC. But for me, it all started with a foundation. So I think as an artist, you have to figure out how can I build my foundation. So I started from being a DJ, now SVP of programming and music choice. I, uh, I went to school for this. I majored in journalism uh, here in Texas, Sam Houston State University. Uh, after college, I worked at two newspapers, crazy hours, low pay, but I knew every year I was getting closer to where I wanted to be. Um, started interning with SOHH.com, and you, 
y'all know SOHH from the hip hop websites? Yeah, legendary, yeah. legendary. Yeah, I, I used to blog for them, go to events like this, do interviews. Uh, I, I had an opportunity to open up with the magazine. Started out uh, as an, a, a freelance writer, worked my way up to associate editor, and uh, arrived here where I am now as the, the news and music editor. So um, if anything, I would just say, make every year count, make every opportunity count. You know, um, that's what worked for me, and I know it can, you know, it can work for you as well. Um, I guess my journey kind of started back at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Um, in freshman year, they told us the single most important thing is to network. Some of these people that you go to school with might not graduate, but they might be the next CEO or founder of a Fortune 500 company. So regardless if they get their degree or not, you should network with them, you should utilize their assets, you should, if, if people are smarter than you, you should keep them around you. You can learn from people. So um, I kind of just grinded all through Howard. I had internships at um, Fox 5 News. I worked at PR agencies. I even did um, some lobbyist work. Uh, and then I graduated and the banks failed and nobody was getting jobs. And I was like, shit, what am I gonna do? Um, and I was like, fuck it, I just moved to New York, I didn't have a job, and I kind of just pulled some strings, and some people at Howard University kind of like set up an email chain, and we're just sending everybody jobs. I got a link for Global Grind, and I got the job, and I just kind of worked my way up, and now I'm here. Well, it all started on a hot day in July when my mother's water broke. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I'm just playing. But, but for real, though, I, I've been on stage since the age of three years old. Um, I started as a dancer. I've trained in theater and in dance. Um, theater companies, dance companies. I trained with the Alvin Ailey School. I've trained at New York University's Tisch School of the Arts in theater. Um, I've done study abroads in Havana, Cuba, and South Africa. Um, I did a lot of internships while in New York at NYU. I interned for um, Spike Lee's 40 Acres and a Mule, Power 105.1, Clear Channel Radio. Um, I worked as a co check girl at Webster Hall. You know what I'm saying? I just was everywhere. Um, d did a lot of downtown theater, um, a, lot of, a lot of different things. And then um, I, I, w I was a dancer for other recording artists, went on tour. Um, did background, singing background, was in the studio writing, you name it, I was doing all of it and um, auditioned for just about everything and I ended up on, on a really long line for an audition for a show called Making the Band and yeah. um, I ended up making the band and I ended up making two platinum selling albums and Shout became um, one of the only female groups in history in the Guinness Book of World Records to go consecutively platinum bop, on the bop, billboard. Bop, bop. Hot 100 charts, and um, then when when that all came to a close, I just kept it moving, and I learned a lot. I made a lot of contacts, um, cause you just like like you said, you just never know. You gotta be nice to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Because the same people that you see on the way up, they gonna remember you when you coming down. So, uh, <laughs> and you know, I I think I made an impression. You know, being humble, letting my work speak for itself. You know. Um, and just having a lot of knowledge, and but then not being afraid to ask for help. So I started Wood Grain Entertainment um, immediately after um, the the group was dismantled, and here I am. I'm, I'm doing movies, I'm doing theater, I'm doing TV, and I'm doing music, and I'm living the dream, as they say. Uh, for me, it started. Uh, and Eden Wall Projects. Uh, but, but, but. I would say I was a gangster, you know, and my mom's was on crack. My sister had a baby out of early years, in her early years, and my father died when I was young, so it left me with the responsibility of taking care of everything, being that my mom's wasn't in her right mind. So I was in this circle with dudes, like this dude right here, Jamie O. And me and him and gang of us, we wind up back to back. Then you turn around, this dude gone. Then you back to back with this person. Mm. Then they gone. Jail, dead, jail, dead, jail, dead. I said, all right, I got to step out this circle. But I couldn't step out this circle until I got my mom sober. So I took her to this place called Turning Point, 
upstate New York, and it's been like, gotta be like 22, 23 years that she been clean. When she got clean, I stepped out the streets. And uh, I started uh, modeling and acting. Uh, I did a lot of music videos, like Quiet Storm, Hate Me Now. Glasses. And I would take my camera on the set, and while like Little X and Hype was shooting they scene, I'd be in the corner shooting my own scene until somebody tell on me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I would take them home and I would edit it up on two VHSs before I even knew how to edit. Just cut them up and I made shows out of that. So I gained a passion for being behind the camera and the, the acting thing, all I wanted was a lead role. I got that in a music video with this artist named Old Lou, My Crazy World. Then the thrill was gone and I wanted to stay behind the camera. So I started shooting in this club in New York called The Tunnel uh, every Thank week. You from like 94, 95 to 2001 when it closed. We had a public access show, Street Funk TV, me and Mr. Excitement, Mellow Mike Hype, Dean Raimondo. That show got us a show on Fox and the WB, in Six Cities. Uh, that show, I left that, turned around and went to Rockefeller. No, I released VHS's, VHS called Tunnel is Closed. Volume one, two, three. Then I re-released them when the DVD format came in, independent. And then I did the three, and then I did a fourth one, which was the best of Jay-Z. When I released that one, Damon Dash, actually I went to this girl named Emmanuel that was working at Rockefeller and tried to get some commercials for the DVD. Dame wanted to see the DVD before he gave us commercials. I showed him the document, uh, the DVD of Jay-Z at the tunnel. He loved it. He was impressed that I did it all by myself. I started working at Rockefeller. Mm. Went to Rockefeller for three, four years. You know, all around the world, London, Africa, you name it. Everywhere I went, private jets, never flew commercial. Uh, then I got tired of Dame Dash mouth. <laughs> you know, whatever you do in this industry, I don't care who you're working for. Mm -hmm. Have some level of respect for Boy, yourself. Because yeah. these dudes will think that, because they got so much money that you a peasant or something. And that wasn't the case. I quit Rockefeller because his mouth after we was all, almost had a fist fight. And, um, you know, dudes the same age as me. I ain't going to let nobody talk to me crazy. I don't care how many billions, millions you got. I quit, everybody thought I was crazy. Oh, choke, you quit, you, I was Rockefeller, you're on top of the world. Turned around, got a job at BET, started producing Rap City. You know, and I never thought that would happen. Then I started producing 106, BET Now, BET Specials. Then I moved into creative services, started doing all the commercials for the network. Then I did a feature film, Cold Blue, and then I could go on forever. But the thing is, I always maintain my independence, always kept choke, no joke in the forefront, no matter what corporation I work for, that's why I can sit up here and be choke no joke. Not the dude that worked for BET, not the dude that worked for Rockefeller, not the dude that worked for Street Phone, not the dude that worked for anybody. Maintain your independence and always remember this. If you work for it, ain't nobody gave you shit. All right? So don't let nobody say, oh, I gave you this, I gave you that. If you work for it, you earned it. That's it. Hell yeah. That's, That's a lot to follow right there. I'm a, no, I'm a, but, but this was a great thing because there's a lot of jewels in each one. And I'm just going to go back to what everybody else said because it's like the streets is a big part of it. And you got to have a passion to get, you know, to improve your environment, whatever everybody else, anybody's dealing with. That's, that's, I think that's where it starts out. And, you know, my love of music and entertainment as a child and just growing up, that was something that I was obsessed with. So with all the, you know, everybody has their different backstories, but um, that's something that I was 100% driven towards. No matter what was gonna happen, I was going to be involved in, in music and in entertainment, and I was blessed that some of my people from the streets happened to be doing things, and I was started to be around stuff. Um, but then, you know, stepped away, go to college, St. John's University, shout out Queens, New York, um, <laughs> Rutgers University, Jersey, and, um, and then another big thing everybody mentioned, internships, man. I mean, you know, internships are key. You gotta work for free, it sucks, it's horrible, it breaks you, you gotta do it. 
I worked, um, I did internship for IFC, the independent film channel, um, which was amazing. I, I was the Fox film rep at Rutgers University for two years, it was amazing. Um, and then getting out of college at the recession when the fucking, the whole, everything is, there's no opportunity working for free again, pa -ing, um, doing anything I could to be around f uh, film and music, you know, at the same time working in music, working with artists, anybody I knew, anybody that would give me an opportunity to help put their music out, film videos. I uh, started a company with my partner, Pace Media. We started Smokestack Recordings, did over 100 music videos, Lil Wayne Jewel's Home Run, She Glue, Jeremiah Party After Two, Saigon, Graf, a lot of guys from New York. Um, and then happened to be blessed to uh, link up with an individual named Ramon Dukes, who's a legend in the game, he was at MTV. And then when Puff started, Revolt brought him along and he, we were blessed that he, he brought us along for the journey. So we, we've been down with Revolt since day one and happened to watch this whole thing grow and it was, it's been amazing. But um, yeah, you gotta grind, you gotta, you gotta grind. There's really no way around it. You have to work, you have to, be, you have to want this and love this more than anything. Like you have to breathe air. It's, it's a crazy thing, it's hard to explain in words, it just is what it is. And like, if, 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 if you wanna feed yourself with this and feed a family and have children, I mean, you have to work hard and, and, and you'll get it, you'll do it, but you gotta praise God, of course, and work hard, and that's, that's where we're at right now. That's right. All right, so, can you hear me okay? No, no I think that one's on. Battery guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, sorry about that, uh, minor technical difficulty. Um, so all of us up here are pretty much in the pop culture industry of some sort, whether it be music, I think pretty much everybody's music, publication, something like that. So I wanna kinda to open, open this up for anyone at the panel, y'all can jump in, but um, share your thoughts on the current climate of the pop culture industry and how you feel it affects how we treat each other, how, you know, social issues and things like that. Your thoughts on that, and y'all can feel free to jump in in any order. You know, it's, it's crazy because I was having this conversation with a colleague of mine recently. Pop culture right now is almost like the wild, wild west. With social media and blogs and websites being so uh, vital into how artists uh, connect with their audiences and the impact they have, everyone's still kind of trying to figure things out. And you've got some professionals that have done their thing and kind of mastered it, but for the most part, when you see these people with just an Instagram account being able to kind of influence what millions of people are discussing on a single day, I mean, that's powerful. And we've never had that before. So for, for you guys out there that are artists, this is almost the best time to be an artist because never before were you able to actually, on your own, identify your market, find out the type of people that are into your music, and then create a product specifically tailored for them. I mean, you can build an audience, put something out there today, and see what kind of reaction you're getting. And if it's good, you keep doing that, you build on that. If it's not so good, you go a different direction. But I love what's happening now. I believe in independence, like Choke was talking about, being independent. And this is the ultimate time to be a artist uh, with a business mind uh, while maintaining your independence. So to answer your question, it's a great time for pop culture and artists alike. Yeah, I'll pick up on the independent part too. Is definitely, if you're an artist or have a movement, there's really no excuses for you these days. Um, you, 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 if your stuff is dope, it, it's, it, it, you gotta get it out there, you know what I mean? And, it, and, and there's no excuse not to because you can put it out through so many various means, independent labels. We work very closely with Sony Red outside of Revolta. I have a, my own label, like I said, my own company, Smokestack, and we work with Sony Red and work with artists. The independent movement is, is a big movement, man. And you can, you can do a lot on your own and, and, and you know, if, if you're blessed to get with a major and get with bigger people that are behind you, that's great. And be smart about it, of course. I mean, everybody knows the horror stories, but you know, independence is, is definitely is a big thing right now, man. And, and you should read up about it and, and find out what's, how you sec can secure yourself as an independent artist through social media, through putting your music out distribution. Is, is, you, can, you can have your whole machine moving on your own. So it's, it's no excuses, really. Yeah, um, I'm actually gonna come in on a little different perspective. I think um, 
social media makes the world a lot smaller and it makes people kind of a lot less creative. Um, Very true. I, I, I can't stress enough how much that I see the same shit every fucking day. Yeah. And it's like, everybody looks alike. Yep. Everybody sounds alike. Yep. Um, and it's just kind of disheartening a little bit because, I mean, as, as great as social media is, it's kind of the gift and the curse. And I, I just also want to stress to you all that, like, what you see on social media is not real. That's one, one glimpse into these people's lives, right? So to me, to be honest, a lot of the people who are making the most moves that are the most influential probably have less than a thousand followers on Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff. Yeah. So like, just be like, don't get disheartened by like seeing somebody who has a million Instagram followers and then getting all this attention because God knows when all that is off and you turn the app off, they're probably like sleeping on a floor in a mattress. Like, so just like keep perspective on what you want to do as an artist. Um, and, and try to keep yourself in a bubble. Get on social media, share your stuff with your fans and connect with them, but try not to get, start, don't start scrolling. Because when you start scrolling, everything starts getting in your head. And you're like, nah, I need to switch this up or this person's doing this and, and I need to do that because that's what's hot. No, you be you. And if your shit is hot, you're going to be on. Yeah, make dope product. I mean, you got to make dope stuff, man. Yeah. Like, you, 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 you can be independent, but you got to, your, your stuff has to be good. You got to work hard at it. I'll also comment, you know, kind of on the on your page, you know, because I thought we were going to keep it positive, but since you opened up a can of worms. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, <laughs> like she said, you know, the, the stuff on social media, it's, it's all perception, you know. We're all putting out an image and we're selling a dream, you know. Um, like you said, some of the people who have all of these um, followers, they're buying followers. These are not their real followers. And then I have a lot of followers, but when I see how many people are liking my stuff, it's like, okay, I feel like hate is the new love, you know how they say love is the new hate, but you know, hate is really the new love. I have a lot of phantom followers, you know what I mean? People who are looking at what I'm doing, but they're not liking, or I can, I can put up a picture that I got my face beat, ooh, my eyebrows is on fleek, and I'll get, you know, 500 likes instantly, but I say, yo, I'm doing a show at South by Southwest, I'll get 12 likes, you know? Oh, my single's out, I'll get, you know, 66 likes, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, like corporations or whatever, they're gonna look at these likes and kind of judge what your, um, what, your, what your influence is, what your draw is or whatever, but it's like, you know, a lot of this, you can't take it, you can't take it for the gospel truth a lot of times with, with social media because people are seeing what you're doing or, you know, they'll come up to you, oh my God, I'm such a fan, I, I, I've been with you since the beginning. When you gonna put something out? I follow you every day. Well, if you followed me every day, you would have saw that the single came out on, <laughs> on Tuesday, on Friday now, you know? Or you would see in, you know, I get people who, who comment on my picture, like, I want to send you some beats. Oh, we want to book you. What's your email? And it's like, well, the booking information is in the profile <laughs> right there, <laughs> you know? So you have a lot of people who, who don't read, who are not, you know, really paying attention. And um, I mean, the, the whole word followers, is, it, they are followers. So if it looks popular, if they see other people like it, then they want to like it. They don't know if they should like it until you say, you know, until, Go until Global Grind says you can like it. Then I don't know if I should like it. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's also making people very mindless. It's, it's very much like, you know, drones. And they just like, okay, we all like this person now. We all saying these words now. We all hashtagging this now. And um, there's, there's a lot of like lack of individuality and, it, and it's crossing over into the creativity as well because you know I have people tell me, you don't even show your body, you need to take these kind of pictures, you need to do these kind of poses. And I'm like, but my music <laughs> is good. Why do I have to push my titties up to my chin and put a filter on it for you to say that my song is good? You know, okay, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> yeah. Let me say, let me add on. Um, honestly speaking, the whole entertainment, entertainment industry is a facade. It's all bullshit, all right? <laughs> Social media is nothing but a reflection of the bullshit that labels created. Um, when, what you see on Instagram is the same shit you saw in the music video. The dude got the big car, the big house. That's the same shit on Instagram. 
So the labels created this image first to sell these artists. You know, uh, you know, our uh, artist come out his first album, his first video. He got the big house, the big car, two chicks in the bed with him, <laughs> and when they, when hype say cut, all that shit is gone. The, the coach to turn back to a pumpkin, right? So I tell you this, like like she says, a lot of the followers are bought. You know what I'm saying? So. When, when you with a label, they pay for a lot of that. Now it's to the point where the labels got lazy. They don't want to, they don't have an artist development uh, department. You know, they not, they won't come out here to South by Southwest and look at somebody and say, yo, this kid got great potential. I'm going to take him, I'm going to sign him, I'm going to groom him, I'm going to put him in the studio with the best producers. No, no now it's... You you already got to be hot. You already have to have five million followers on or five million views on YouTube for your song to pop. So if they play in that game, play along with them. If you got some bread, pay under the table. Pay to get a, a million followers on on Instagram. Pay to get five million views on YouTube. <laughs> pay flexing them money to play your record, cause that's all that's really happening. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Those artists that you see popping are the artists that got a budget to pay to play. Mm -hmm. You got a few that get lucky. You know what I'm saying? But they get lucky and then they get in and then they hit this, what we call a brick wall or the ceiling. And then you get an indecent proposal for you to move forward. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to take that indecent proposal? <laughs> if you're a man, it's probably another man making this proposal to you. <laughs> If you're a woman, it's another woman. That's what's going on now. Back when I came up, I ain't going to say no companies. I ain't going to say no executives. Well, motherfuckers was trying to get me to sleep with them to be an executive. You know what I'm saying? And they, they knew I didn't play that shit, right? <laughs> so that kind of put a damper on my career. You know, I didn't, and, they, and nowadays, they very sophisticated in how they do it because they don't want to get uh, a sexual harassment in the suit. So... If he if he's trying to no no disrespect if he's trying to get at me he'll have her say something to say to her to say to him to get to me because if he said directly I'll sue him and the, and the whole company over his head is gonna go down so make a long story short if perception is what is getting these people a million dollar deal like uh, Trinidad James no disrespect to the dude. They bore into him because of his image. Everybody thought it was a joke. He looked like Jerome from Martin. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They fucked around, gave this dude two million, everybody laughing. Now where he at? Because of him, nobody else is getting two million dollars. Yeah. So play the game with them. But you buy, you buy these likes and you yeah. buy these followers and then the company's gonna expect you to make those sales. So you got five million followers. Why did you only get five five hundred thousand? You know sales. You know what I'm saying. You a failure now. Now you need to recoup. Now you in the red. Now we in the red. Now we ain't gonna open your budget next quarter or you know next fiscal year. And now you out here, you know, paying out your pocket for your street team trying to get that same influence that they threw that two million dollars into. So it's, I mean, it's, it's I, I feel I like you, you just me. really gotta, you just really gotta grind and make your shit organic. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've made my shit organic. All the followers I have are organic. They press that, or I'm, I go, I'll go to your phone right now and be like, yeah, 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 you follow me? Let me see. Take a oh, nut. No. Here you go, boom. And then the single, boom. Bam, bam. Thank you. So. Yeah, you gotta like, be independent. Pull your phone out right now, actually. You gotta be independent these days. It's, <laughs> it's really, like, like she said, you gotta grind to be independent and all, because you could get caught in by, into all of that stuff, but that'll just detract you from yeah. making your dope record and your dope movement. And, like, I mean, there's guys that are winning right now because they have the movements in the streets, they got the movement with the youth, they understand it, and they're, they're just tapped into that, and they're not thinking about all this other crazy stuff which we could get sidetracked a million ways you know what I mean so yeah you gotta just and a, a quick example remember uh, Soldier Boy had 10 million followers when he was on Interscope they thought he was gonna do big numbers because of the Superman song remember Soldier Boy and think about your image 
when you do things. Soldier Boy had all the little kids doing the, uh, <laughs> right? Then he turned around next to album, he was a gangster. So the parents is like, oh, you can't listen to Soldier Boy no more. So the label thought, oh, he got 10 million followers. We gonna do it. And they put it out his album. He turned from uh, a child, fa child artist favorite to a gangster, and he didn't even sell 10,000 records. I'm just so a, know I'm your audience. I'm just gonna add something really, really quick from like a, a media platform perspective. No, number one is like disruption is incredible in the culture right now. Just the very distribution of the content has changed. Um, Young Thug just dropped a video a couple of weeks ago. As a media outlet, we couldn't even get it because the power is with you. He decided, I'm distributing it to YouTube, fuck TV, fuck whatever, right? So I think a big part of the culture is that it causes disruption and traditional media in some ways is kind of scared and nervous about it. That's why you see a lot of companies, they want to own the cable company, they want to own the broadband pipeline. So you have, everybody's locking everything down because there's actually a lot of power in what you guys can do. Now the opportunity that I see that I think is missing, this is me more talking than the media talking, is like, I think there's an opportunity to have a stronger voice. Imagine if Public Enemy had Twitter back when they was disrupting the game. If KRS-One had Instagram. So what I don't see coming out of the artistic community is enough voice for change. Obviously there's some artists out there I love with, Tlaib does and, and a lot of artists, but I see a definitive space, a definitive lane for artists that has great music, right, that still everybody can get with, but it's saying something. There is a missing void. So as we swirl into this presidential election and, and all the potential change you see happening, I just see it as an opportunity to use this media to affect pop culture in a much, much bigger, impactful way. And I'll tell you this, it won't be limited to the United States, right? Because we live in a global that's, environment. That's a big key right there, okay? my brother. That's so, a big key right so, there. The so, international global side of things is something I think people really don't understand. And that, that's, that's the society that we are in right now, is the international society, for sure. I love what Damon said about being disruptive. Um, that's something that I heard at a Revolt Music Conference, I heard Diddy say, is that you have to be disruptive. And there's a difference between disruptive and destructive. Um, disruptive is kind of shaking things up, making yourself unique, kind of making people see you, see who you are, making people see who your brand is and how your brand stands out from everyone else. Disruptive is not taking no for an answer. That's being disruptive, not destructive though. Like, you know, there's a difference. But um, we- wait, wait, before you go to the next uh -huh. topic. Also, pay attention to what you seeing that's popping in the industry. Because I'm going I'm to give y'all a little secret. Y'all see how the gangster Eric just died and everybody started wearing the tight shit? <laughs> they doing that. The motherfuckers up here, they doing that. Because I'm one of the people that produce shows, you know, for, for these corporations, right? And then they tell us, um, oh, don't bring that music in here. Uh, that's too threatening. Uh, we want this type of music. So they're shut. Like, half of y'all in here will come to me at BET and be like, yo, this is my music, this is my video, right? I'll take it to the executives and be like, yo, this dude is hot. But if they feel like you in that lane of gangster music or you a threat, or you're going to walk in the office and scare the shit out of them, you know, then they, they switching over to, you know, that's why a, a young thug could wear a dress. And he probably ain't even gay. He just playing into what they want. That's why a lot of these people are playing into what they want. So watch what's going on. And I'm not saying duplicate it. I'm not saying be original. But these motherfuckers up here got a plan. And they making, they funneling what they want to funnel through the system. And you, you, want, you like, yo, what? My shit is high. What, what, what's, these people up here, they don't want X amount of people making X amount of moolah. So they, they, they kind of force feeding us what they want us to have and making it high.
And that's what's really going on, keeping it a buck. So I'm, I'm, to piggyback on you, to throw it back to Damon, when you're saying um, artists you know, using their voice, using this as a platform for social change, and then what he just said, how do you, how do you being a programmer, you know, and you, and you want artists to have content that are saying things like, how do we, how do we break that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, first, I'm, I'm agree, sorry, I'm, I'm a totally agree that there's a, a conscious effort by the media companies that control 90, 95% of the broadcast outlets to play certain types of music. You know, I grew up in the era of hip hop and we ain't had no fucking radio. So I, to me, I look at it differently because we didn't need the radio. I, I was with hip hop and there was no BET, there was no MTV. All right, so, you know, it was cassette tapes and mixtapes and people had a voice. Mm -hmm. What I see in social media and outlets, the fact that you can upload your account and reach them in pop, you can build that. I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out, like, do you need Clear Channel? Do I need a major record label? Well, a friend of mine, I'm not going to say the name of the artist, but a friend of mine is running the biggest artist in the world company right now. And this artist only has one more album left mm -hmm. with a major label. And I'm trying to figure out, yo, like, why would this artist go back? I don't, I don't necessarily know. So to, to try to answer your question, it's something I'm looking for personally. I just think it's an opportunity. You know, I think, and I think in their genre, Public Enemy was one of the biggest groups in the world at their, at their time. And I'm just seeing that there's a void for that. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree with the void, but as the, because I think I'm the only like creative, like actual artist person on the panel. So like, I'm just kind of playing devil's advocate. Like when you're saying you, you want that, cause you personally, check, check. but you also have to play the business side. And then we know that there's the powers that be with an ulterior motive. Me as a creative, I'm like, okay, I want to get played on the major outlets. I want to say something, but I got to follow the trend, you know? And then my audience, you know, they're gonna follow what's what's going through the 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 mainstream, the major the outlets, and they might like what I'm saying. I have a conscious, you know, message, yeah. but yeah. they don't think that's hot because that's not what's, what's being um, force fed to them as what's hot, you know. Well, so you suffer, and you're you're kind of caught between, you know, you know, catch twenty two. Like I want to say something, but I want to sell some records, so I'm gonna do what's gonna sell, and then hopefully they'll they'll come to me because I'm doing what's selling, and then they'll hear my conscious song when they come to the when it comes to the show. I just, wanna, yeah. whole I just want to interject real quick. We do have one outlet. Revolt TV is here for all artists that have conscious, and, and, and we, we do a lot of programming like that. We, uh, we were just out in Flint. Justice for Flint. Um, Hugh, Hugh went raised over $150,000. We were with uh, you know Minister Farrakhan, a Million Man March down there, um, Black Lives Matter. I mean, we've been on top of a lot of things, so there is some effort to bring that to the public. I think there's definitely a huge, big force pushing against it, and a huge force trying to keep it down. But um, there's that some- That force over there too, there's, bro. There's, 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 there's some people that, you know, uh, that are fighting, and I think if you're an artist, you have to be aware of you know, what you're doing. You gotta walk with God at all times, walk with the light at all times, keep it close to you. Of course, this game is crazy. You can fall into the snake pits easy, but um, if you have your message, there's, there's ways to get it out, and you just gotta fight for it. All right, and I know we have a bunch of media up here, so this is for Revolt, Music Choice, uh, Global Grind, and of course, uh, Hip Hop Weekly. Um, and since we have a lot of artists, I know, I know they wanna know this too. From a professional standpoint, what are you guys looking for for artists to get them placed on your publication, played on your channels? Uh, I say um, originality, like that's like the number one. So like I get, hundreds of emails a day of people begging and asking me to listen to their music, right? So if your stuff doesn't catch my ear within the first like 30 seconds, it's going, I'm cutting it off, it's the next email. Um, I think I'm looking for like, obviously originality, I'm looking for melody. The reason why Fetty Wap is winning the way he winning, why he had four top 10 Billboard hits last year was because he understood the importance of melody. People like to sing. People like to hum. They like all of that. So he's kind of figured out, I guess, what the mainstream masses um, really enjoy. And um, it's just coming with some real, some real truth. Whatever your truth is, whatever you live it, if you're a gangster and you spitting that gangster stuff, 
cool. If you're a conscious rapper, if you're on Ken if you're on your Kendrick Lamar, if you're on your J. Cole, whatever you spit, whatever you sing, just make sure it's true to you. I can tell that when I listen to your music. And also good production, please. I love good production. So if your homie that makes those beats is really good, utilize him. Make sure like y'all team up together because I, I really do appreciate a good, a good producer. For those just coming in, I'm with Hip Hop Weekly Magazine. I'm Jay Bachelor. Um, if you're an established artist, I'm just looking for your, your newest, hottest record. If you're a new artist, I want to hear the record after the record you're sending me. What I'm saying is, I want to know there's some consistency, all right? Have your stuff ready so that if we go and vouch for you as an artist, when we backdoor and our online audience asks for another record from you, send it to us and it's hot, we're gonna put it out there. The worst thing in the world, Choke mentioned this when we opened up, is an artist like that puts out a record and then that's it and you never hear from them again. I wanna hear the record you wanna give me and I wanna hear the record after that. So consistency and um, you know, uh, powerful music. Uh, one thing that I, I always tell artists that I truly believe in is maybe 20% of what's important is what's happening in that studio. The passion is in the studio when you're making the music. Once you leave the studio, the other 80% is the business of getting your record out there, pushing your record, networking. I don't care if you're in St. Louis, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, New York. Find the DJs that have the influence you don't have. It's dope to be the hottest rapper in your uh, apartment complex, but that's not enough. That's not enough. You gotta find the people that can give you that. My man from Revolt, Global Grind. You gotta find the people that can push your record further than you ever can. So um, have those records ready for us, be consistent, and once you leave that studio, it's, it's business from there. The passion is in the studio. Outside, the rest is business. So I would say with um, music choice, obviously we all want good music, we want hits, we want flavor, but what we really want to do is partner with you. You know, I figured out a couple of years ago, just playing somebody's record one time, you know, that's cool, but what it's really about is, is there a way to partner with you? Good example, DJ Chose out of Texas, you know? He's trying to break his record everywhere I go. Came through Music Choice doing his promo run. I was like, man, what we really need to do is figure out how I can use my platform and you can use your platform. Because you know what? I ain't that hot in the streets in Texas. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But I'm hot, I, I'm hot I'm hot nationally because I'm because, because I'm in 55 million exactly. homes. So so Music Choice more than likely will be the first television network every artist in this room will be on. Because we're audio, we're commercial free, play a lot more music. So in terms of TV, we are more than likely going to be that first outlet for you. But I figured out a long time ago me just playing your record is cool, but if I can have a relationship with you, that's the win-win, and so that's what we're trying to do. Um, yeah, 100%. Well, everything that they said is 100% is true, and as far as me, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you could get music and different things to revolt, but to get with me, I mean, I need to be seeing it myself with my own eyes. I mean, there's labels that come to me every day and different things, and people that come to me from all types of angles, but if I don't hear it from my guys and hear it from... The, the people that I know that are actually in the mix and in the clubs and in the different places and in the hoods all over the world, first of all, is something that is super key. I want, you know, if you're hot all over, the, if you're hot in, you know, in India, I want to hear about it. I mean, they got a billion people there. You know what I mean? They got a billion people in these places, and I, I, that's what I want to know, and I want to see it. I want to experience it. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to have everything so professional and tight and everything, but I want to see some visual. I want to hear some audio. I want to be able to go to a, 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 a page or something, you know, just simple stuff, but, I, but it's got to be there, and then, and then the movement part of it. I mean, you have to have, you know, some people believe it. Like, you got to be bigger than your apartment complex. Like my man said, you got to take yourself serious. You got to touch the people, do shows. You can do it. There's nothing stopping you. I mean, if you love it and do it, you can do it. And you just the steps that you have to take as an artist. All right, real quick, and if, if y'all want to get at the people at Revolt or MTV Music, MTV2, BT Jams, y'all should look for the person that's the music programming. That's, that's the person that's yeah. going to play your music. Yeah. 
That is the person. Yeah, music gets it submitted to, to these companies. Yeah. Tuma, excuse me. Yeah, it right. used to be Tuma uh, at Revolt, but it used to be, yeah, he had Spotify now. Like, Spotify, yep. Yeah. yeah. Shout so out to Mabasa, the OG. Look him up, Tuma. Legend. Kelly G used to be at BET. He's with us. But this go back to you just not going to give a person your music and they going to play it, yep. right? Like when I was at BET, you know, 106 and Park, the kids used to vote for videos. Y'all familiar with that, right? Bullshit. <laughs> I could tell you the number one song two weeks in advance. So while these kids is calling, 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 it's just a fucking playlist. So get with the dude that's involved with music program or the music programmer. Build a rapport with him. Try to give him some money if you can. You know, be careful how you do that. But yeah. if you get it right be with that person, with that, yes, that is us, the bro. person that is going to play nah, your he's 100% music. right. He's 100% and right. And that, that also go for radio, too. Whoever's in a music program at the radio station, there's a playlist. People are not calling up and saying, hey, I want to hear the new D. Wood song. Play that. And they go, all right. <laughs> and they're going to spin it. No, it don't work that way. Trust me. All right, so we're going to take, we're going to take it to the floor. Does anyone have any questions for our panels today? I know y'all didn't come over here to not have no questions. Got one. My man right here. All right, he got we the got guitar a hand. with we him too, so I know he's a serious musician. Hey, how y'all doing? Like, I'm a fan of what y'all are doing for What's the community. What's up, brother? Right. I'm, yeah, man, yeah. My name is Will, oh, there we go. My name is Will Wildfire. Uh, this is be like the second show. We did at South By. Um, we just opened up for B.O.B. and stuff, so we've been doing a lot. Congrats, brother. And, yeah, it's been pretty, pretty cool, and I like what's going on here. I guess... Um, with everything, like you were saying, being bigger than your apartment complex, like we were just like in noisy, like with uh, King Mez and like Rhapsody and all of them. Like North Carolina's doing a lot of stuff. And so like being from a place like that, I was just wondering, like when it comes to making it happen like organically, I guess what's like the best method? Because I, I, I produce, I play all my own instruments, like I do everything on my own and mix and everything. And so when it comes to like getting it heard, I know you're saying like go to the, the radios and do all that stuff like, but what's next? You know what I mean? Like after you've done all of those steps, like I know it's a grind, yeah. but. First off, shout out to North Carolina. I used yeah. to live out there. Fayetteville, <laughs> Vietnam, oh, yeah. J. Cole's the homie. All right, there we go. Um, <laughs> You know what, I opened up by talking about the power of social media. Right. And I don't want to get it twisted. I, you know, the people are buying likes, people are doing this. But what I, what I meant was, you know, media has always been able to see what people are into and use that to sell you something. But the point that I was making earlier was that this is the first time where you guys could do that. It used to be eight people in a room that could see these Facts. numbers. Now you can see these numbers, and you can use these numbers to further what you have going on. So, okay, now to answer your question, where do you go from there? I mean, it's, it's a digital era, man. The kind of music, listen to what you're making, and who do you sound like? What, what kind of artists would people compare you to? Use that in information to target your music to their audience. All right, you got, you got bloggers up here, you have uh, editors up here, you have network, connect with these people. As I said before, find the most influential DJs in your city. Find the most influential bloggers that you can get in contact with. Build those relationships. Um, and if, eventually what's gonna happen is someone's gonna give you an opportunity. You wouldn't be here if you didn't want an opportunity. Exactly. Right, right? everybody in here is here because they wanna further their career. Someone's gonna give you that chance. And when that door opens, another one will open. But the most important thing is this. Every single day, before you close your eyes, you need to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I did something today to further my career. Facts, All right? facts. So me and you will talk after this, but that's kind of what I wanted it's, to say. It's to like about Choke that. said, uh, with the video programmers, those are key people, gatekeepers. Identify them, know them, know, know your business. You have dope product, you obviously got the passion, then yeah, you got you know what I mean it's evolution. Um, like I said, it, like he, uh, my man was saying, international. We work heavy with Caribbean artists. Shout out my man in London. Um, they, the Caribbean artists have a crazy grind. They understand their their world. They un, you know what I mean. So just you know understand the gatekeepers, understand the different people that you need to get in touch with, and just punch all the day, man. I'm I'm also a big advocate of live performance. Um, you, obviously, you're a live performer. You got your guitar right here. You walking down the street, somebody's gonna be, hey man, what you do? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, 
coming to festivals like this, being, you know, being bigger than your apartment complex. I love that. I'm going to use that forever now. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Shout out the apartment complexes, though. Yeah, I grew up in apartment complexes, right and it was important. The apartment complex is important. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, but like you know, getting outside of your of your your little apartment complex of your of your market, you're you're from North Carolina, you're over here in Texas, you're gonna make new fans. Yeah. Every time you get on stage, in live performance is my thing. I make new fans. That's my goal. Every time I'm making new fans. Every time I get on stage, if they didn't know the song before they came in, they gonna know it. They are gonna want to know about it later. And then you have your team with you. They, they hitting people up in the crowd. They identifying the gatekeepers who are in the crowd, you know, and letting, letting them know how they can get in touch with you, how they can follow up to maybe get on a bigger stage next year, to get it um, in a, on another show in another market, you know. And I take a lot of influence from what they do in the, in the rock world, you know. It, you don't have to be all glitz and glamour. You don't have to be in the, in the Mercedes Sprinter. I just wanted to like mention like one little thing. Jay Bachelor and Mike both use the word business. Please make sure your business is right as well. Like your management team, who you keep around you is very important. You just want to be in a positive space with positive vibes at yeah. all times. Please, people will remember who you bring around. Yeah. And if any of that is a distraction from you as an artist, it will affect you. People will be like, nah, I'm not, we're not working with him. I don't want to do anything with him because his team is, is off. Right. They're not professional. Make sure you know about getting your publishing and your royalty. Oh. So many artists get screwed over and are broke with platinum hits <laughs> because of the publishing and the royalties, the points. <laughs> like nobody explains that to the artist, right? You're yeah. there to create. But make sure if you don't understand those things, make sure you have a management team that understands the importance of Go making sure. Go get a sure book and read and about read it. it. And, you know, if you don't understand it, go ahead and get, you know, royalties for dummies. Because it's important. Because you'll be out here and you'll be working. You're going to have to understand it at some point. Yeah. It's, you're going to be forced to. So you might as well get ahead of the curve. Yo, Absolutely. Another thing you could do, too. What, what do you sing? See, it's good for you. Because if I was you, you're in North Carolina, I hit Charlotte. I You from Charlotte? All right. So it's a, lot, it's a lot going on out there, right? All the high artists out there, you should be singing hooks for. Because that's going to spread you. You know what I'm saying? If you on this dude hook, this dude, this chick, this chick, everybody's going to be like, yo, why are you on everybody's hooks? And that's going to build you. You know what I'm saying? So network with everybody that's around you and try to get on everybody's shit. And then you know, I'm sorry to cut you off. And then another thing, we, we were talking about the gatekeepers and knowing the, the music programmers, but also know the music supervisors for film and TV. Because then you get a commercial or you got that song that plays in the background when, you know, I was having a dramatic scene on Love and Hip Hop and I threw the drink in her face. Oh, my God, I like that song. You know what I'm saying? And then you you gained more audience and you gained royalties and you getting, you know what I'm saying, more opportunities. Cool, cool. Next question. Any more questions? Um, I think it's very obvious that we live in a world that's like um, instant gratification, right? So I want all of y'all to speak to like, where's what's the way to be sustainable? You know what I mean? What's the way to keep yourself from being just like a one-hit wonder or, oh, I did good and I sold all this and then my next album flops? What's the way to keep yourself relevant? Don't sound like future. <laughs> Don't do that. Shout That's out the number Shout one out key future to success, though. right? No, um, I'm just going to drop this gem for everybody to remember. Nothing in life comes fast or easy. So, if that hit record that you did, like if it blew up and everything comes crazy all overnight, more than likely it's going to disappear overnight too. So it's like it's like a slow grind. It's a slow build. Um, I just think it's all about the content and the music you put out, right? So like Jay was saying, identify who your audience is. Understand what they like and just cater to them, right? Everybody else will eventually come on and, and join the movement. But if you're core following, you think J. Cole, like a lot of people in the industry think J. Cole is boring, right? But guess who don't think J. Cole is boring? hates millions of fans who he sells out in Madison Square Garden. So regardless, like, yeah, we're the influencers <laughs> and we're the gatekeepers, you know what I'm saying? That's but guess fact. what? Some of the shit that we say doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean. Because J. Cole has fans who love him and he sells out arenas. 
So yeah, don't don't aim for uh, instant success. Aim for long. I mean, if you're gonna or if you're an artist or artist you work with, you know, like you have to have that conversation. What are you in this for? Are you in this to to just put out a record and make a bunch of money and then go away? I mean, are you in this for lifetime, legendary? Fully committed to, to being an artist and, and representing your music and your culture. So that's a conversation then, you got to have. also know how to diversify. You know, I, I was always trained. My mentors always taught me, you know, be a, you know, be a triple threat. And that's not me being like, oh, I'm a triple threat. Ooh. It's like, no, when, when shit slows down with music, guess what? I'm doing some film. I'm doing some theater. Um, I'm, I'm teaching, you know, we were just talking to a gentleman earlier about, you know, doing consulting, we're doing artist development with up and coming people, you know what I'm saying? Um, writing, getting, you know, being behind the scenes and writing on other people's projects. You know, know how to diversify your craft and, and monetize what you do. If you, you learn, you had big success one year and then shit slowing down, somebody wants to know how you got that big success that one year, you know what I mean? So get paid to tell them. Damn it. So. I, all right, we have I would to. Say, um, I would say that don't, don't try to flood your, your audience or the industry with stuff. That's the problem with people nowadays. They don't follow what was like the mold. I know we have to break the mold, but you don't see Beyonce trying to drop two albums in one year. You don't see her trying to drop an album every year. She'll give you one, then she'll wait four years. And take time to go in the studio, develop a, a new project and everything. Usher, he gonna go in, he gonna take his time to develop something and come with a, a whole new project. A lot of people, they put out songs and then they get a buzz and then they try to follow it right up with something and you don't have to do that. Ride that wave, let the, let the wave go like this. Then come back, don't be quick to, you know, you on the wave and you want to come again right at, right after it because you might fall on your face. And then you put out something too quick and your people are not receptive to it, then you just killed yourself. You know what I'm saying? So I would say do it in increments. Don't try to flood because this person's flooding and this person won't. Look at those that are great, the Michael Jacksons, the, you know, the great ones that come at you every four years or every three years. And I know you can't, some people don't have the, uh, I don't even know what I'm looking for. Yeah, the attention span to wait that long. But sometimes when those that love you, like if Beyonce come out right now, she gonna sell a million records. People is dying to know what the hell is going on in our life. Cause she could disappear for a minute. Sometimes you gotta do that. Make them miss you. Yeah. All right, so we got time for one more question. I Okay, here you go. What's going on, y'all? Uh, Nazo Bravo from LA. I'm performing here later. I appreciate you guys dropping all this knowledge. Congrats, bro. Um, me personally, I, have a, I just had a question about if you have a song, a radio versus internet as far as putting your marketing efforts into, how do you feel about if you have a song that you feel like is good for radio, should you go after radio or go after uh, you know, YouTube blogs, like if you had to pick, because as an independent artist, you don't necessarily have all the resources to be able to just drop a song and it's everywhere all at the same time. So I just want to get you guys a take because I always hear some people like, no, nah, radio, no. If you, if you have I, I money, mean, if you have a budget, I will say hire a dope radio promoter or a dope video promotion guy. Because these guys, you get them a couple of stacks, they're going to get you some spins on the radio because they have the relationships, because that's what they do. Same thing like the dudes in video promotions. I, I'll tell y'all some names off the stage, because I don't want to get nobody in no trouble. But it's dudes that you could pay, and your video's going to be on Revolt, your video's going to be on MTV, your video's going to be on BET. And I know this for a fact. You know what I'm saying? So I say if you got a little bit of bread, and you don't know what to do with it, give it to the radio promotion guy. Make sure they credible, or a video promotion guy, if you got a video, pay them, and I guarantee you, you're gonna see results. You might, you might be able to pay, and you might get it on once or twice. It might get aired somewhere, but um, you, you, it gotta be dope, bro. You gotta have people behind it. I mean, if, if we ain't getting no calls about it, if it ain't getting tweeted and blogged, if the people ain't calling for it, 
if it gets aired at 2 o'clock in the morning on MTV or wherever it gets aired, I don't know. You could put it on your resume. Does it, is it going to change your whole life? It might not. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you could put all your funds into something like that. But what you want to really do is make sure you, that it, that's the one. That you got the one. And then everybody around you is telling you that's the one. And then, then you make those decisions to where who you got to pay and, and, and those things. But... Don't jump that gun too early. You know what I'm saying? You if gotta you believe think, in the song, yeah. and, and, and exactly. everybody around you say, I, "Perfect example, real quick." Fact. Charlie Baltimore, two years ago, she was getting ready to drop a mixtape. I went. I was managing Trick Trick uh, in Detroit. She was working with BMB. They was getting ready to put a a, a mixtape called "Hard to Kill" on live mixtapes. I said, "Yo, what y'all doing? This shit sound like an album. Let me show you how to work it." I took him to New York. Uh, Dude had the, the president of the label, he had some bread. I took him to Breakfast Club, I took him to Vlad, I took him to a bunch of media outlets, went back to Detroit, then we drove from New York to Atlanta for the BT Hip Hop Awards. We stopped different parties, different strip clubs, all the way till we got to Atlanta, did the red carpet. Time the BT Awards came around, she had a nomination for Best Female Hip Hop off a mixtape that she's going to put up on live mixtapes for free. And I got them to put it on iTunes and follow my lead. And she got a BET nomination out of it. And that same video promotion guy had her shit burning on MTV. And everybody, the perception was she was popping again. You know, and then they seen us all out in the streets, giving out T-shirts and everything. So everybody's perception was she was popping. She got the nomination. What happened? She ain't win. But the perception, it made it so much bigger. And she could have did more, but I ain't gonna get into that. I just, I just wanna say to everybody in the room that, that, that there's a bunch of different strategies and approaches you could take, but remember there's levels to the game. So the radio, the truth is, you're talking about 60 to $80,000 in promotion money to even think about being in the top 10 on a chart. Yeah. You know, What I would do is number one, I would understand all the non-traditional outlets, like the Music Choices, the XM Series, etc. If I'm gonna hit radio, I'm gonna understand who those mix show DJs are and those DJs that are gonna get my story started. See, it's all about getting your story started. And what he was saying about Charlie B Bartlett is that he developed a story. So if you don't, you don't have a story, running after radio I don't think is the first level that you wanna start it. You wanna create a groundswell so that when more traditional media is looking at you, they understand who you are. And if you wanna sustain that over time, have that follow up, but you know, spending sixty, eighty thousand dollars or even if it's five thousand dollars on, on just a local market is still a lot of money for something you might get played at two o'clock in the morning for two weeks and then you out of there. Exactly. It's not, it's not really the game. All right, so we're down to the, the last minute of the panel. Like I said, guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, if we can go down the line and let everyone know how they can find you on the internet, emails, uh, Twitter, whatever you want to give them. Sure. Uh, it's dwilliams at musicchoice.com. You can find me right there. Mm -hmm. Once again, if you just came in, I'm Jay Batchelor from Hip Hop Weekly Magazine. You can follow me, all my social media is the same thing, J underscore Batchelor. You can follow the magazine on IG, at Hip Hop Weekly Magazine. Once again, all my social media is J underscore Batchelor, like Bachelor Party. And, <laughs> and uh, IG, the magazine is at Hip Hop Weekly Magazine. And once again, I'm Brittany Lewis from Global Grind. Uh, all of my social media is at Buttercup underscore B. That's on Instagram and Twitter. And on Snapchat, I'm Buttercup B underscore 27. My name is D Woods. Um, you can go to my official website, MissDWoods.com, M-I-S-S-DWoods.com. Check out my new single, Keep Calm, Dance to This and all the fun things that are on um, on the website, all my social media is the same. Y-A girl D Woods, your girl D Woods. That's for Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And um, dang, you missed all my shows this week, but that's okay. You can follow me and find out where I'm gonna be <laughs> next time. <laughs> next time. Yeah, it's Choke No Joke. That's C-H-O-K-E-N-O-J-O-K-E. 
Uh, emails, choke no joke at Gmail. Uh, Instagram, real choke no joke. And my website is choke no joke productions.com with an S. And remember, y'all, y'all hear all this money talk about the industry paying. Y'all remember that. <laughs> Moving forward, <laughs> it ain't just about talent. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of bullshit that's going on. All right? Word. Um, <laughs> It's Mike P, Revolt TV. Uh, you can follow Revolt, of course, at Revolt TV or, or across all social medias if you want to get with my movement, Smokestack Recordings, Instagram, Smokestack LLC on Twitter. And uh, if you want to contact me, revolt.newyorkcity at Gmail. If it's, you know, for that side, Smokestack LLC at Gmail. If it's something for, you know, music videos, which we do, feature films we got coming. All, you know, and that's another thing, last thing that I would like to say, entertainment. If you're a musician, whatever, this, these days and days, you gotta be able to do everything and try to get it any which way you can. If you love entertainment, you gotta try to, you know, be, be all facets of it. So God bless everybody. Oh, one more thing I gotta say. Do not listen to anybody. <laughs> if you <laughs> believe in yourself, I don't care if it's your mother, your little brother, That's if you believe in yourself, pursue that shit. Love it. Because somebody might deter you from reaching success by telling you they don't believe in you. Believe in yourself regardless to what. You know, because it's better to do it and fail than to be sitting around wondering if you would have made it. And when you do it, you go buy that person a house and say, God bless. All right, and on that note, make sure you guys follow me at 11.8 or at Baller Alert, Instagram and Twitter. And again, thank y'all very much. Legendary, legendary. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank our panelists for sure. Hey, you guys, you guys want us to get a picture real quick? Yeah. Choke, no joke. Yeah. It's choke, no joke. Let's go. Choke, no joke. Chicken, choke, no joke. Choke, no joke. Niggas, choke, no joke. <laughs>